Now what we're going to do is we're going to move to the saddling part, okay? And what we want to do once we do that is we want to learn more about, once we have the saddle on, we want to learn more about how to be an efficient rider, okay? There's many different riders in the world. There's some that are absolutely technically beautiful, okay? There's some that ride that aren't so technically beautiful, that are basically hanging on for dear life, but yet they consider themselves a good rider. So what is a good rider? In my opinion, a good rider is a rider that's in true balance. What is true balance? It means like you're on a bicycle. When you take the training wheels off your bicycle, who holds that thing up? We do. We have to learn that we are the balancing mechanism on a bike. People on a horse don't have to learn that all the time because why? A horse has its own natural balance and a bicycle does not. And if you don't put the kickstand down, take your finger off a bike, it always falls over. A horse won't. So that's why we can trick ourselves into thinking that somehow we're doing something. We want to be just like the bike though. When we sit on that horse, we want to be in balance, no nothing that is needed to keep us up there but us. That's what we want to shoot for. Okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to show you when you get ready to get your horse, we're going to give you these two things. A dog halter and a leash. It's just that simple. Okay? You might say, well, these aren't dogs. Once they're trained like this, they act like dogs. Okay? And this is actually the same thing as a dog. If you think about it, there is Fido. Woof, woof. The only difference between this and a horse, horses wear it upside down. It's the only difference. So what we want you to do, thank you, good girl, good girl. All right, what, what we want you to do is come up here and get on the left-hand side of the horse. Why is that? We learned it at the very beginning. This is the general passive side of most of the horses in the world from birth, okay? This eye doesn't trigger fear like that eye does on 90% on of the horses, okay? So we want to be over here, and this is traditionally the side mankind has got up on. There's many different claims as to why, but I think I know why. They don't even know why, but... This is why, because of that passive side. What we want you to do is put your rope over the horse's neck. When you get over here, see if I can get coordinated. One end of this works. Okay, that goes just like that. You don't have to grab onto it unless the horse tries to leave while you're trying to put this on. So you can drop it once you get that on there. Now we're going to hold this halter upside down from a dog like a wheelbarrow. See, here's the two sticks that my hands are on, and that little circle out there is my wheel. See, this is my wheelbarrow. Why are we going to hold it like that? Because most humans approach the horse like this. And what that is is an aggressive move based on your predator instinct. We want to get rid of all that stuff. So what we want to do is hold it like a wheelbarrow, stand next to them like a horse, and put their nose through the hole. There's no aggressiveness there. So your horse is going to be throwing its head all over the place and fighting you, going, I don't like you when you come at me like that. Okay? Now we're going to reach over and get the strap. And we're going to put it, usually in the first hole will be enough. Then what we want to do is we want to snap in. And now we're going to walk our horse back to the hitching post over there to get ready to saddle. Now, a lot of people will walk their horses like this. Like, like they've got a, a lighted nuclear bomb on the end of their rope. You don't want to do that because what's, what is a horse going to think? Yeah, and you can't be a scared alpha unless you're scared of a predator. If you're a horse and you're scared of the horse, then you are now beta. So what we want to do is we want to lead the horse like a dog. Come on, Rover. Let's go. Once they're trained, they know what to do. They know to follow you, okay? Now, I'm going to actually think here how I could do this because we have a mud hole there. That'd be too far away. I guess I'll just come in here. And I'll move the saddle a little bit. Okay, when you get to the hitching post, you're going to take your rope and wrap this thing around here two or three times, just like that. Come on. Oh, 
Oh, the mud's not going to, come on. See, she says, my, I just got my shoes done, so I don't want to get my feet dirty. You want to leave it two or three feet here. You don't want to tie your horse ever like this to something. Because if they spooked for any reason, even if they're well trained, they'll take whatever that is with them down the road. Okay? All right. So now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to brush our horse. The reason we're doing that is we don't want to put our saddle on if they have a dirty back. That would be the same as putting on your hiking boots if they had gravel in them. That would hurt. So you want to be kind to your horse. Remember, the more you treat them with kindness, with authority, the more they'll respond to you with kindness back. And they'll respect you as a leader. Nobody wants a leader that constantly, you would know well, Pablo, that wants to beat you up with a stick every day. You know, down there where you came from, right? You don't want that kind of thing. That's not fair. That's not good. Now, when you go around the horse, put your hand on their hip and walk as close as you can to the back legs. You don't want to go walking out here thinking, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm out of harm's way. This would be Babe Ruth's sweet spot back here. Back here close you can still get hurt it still hurt if you got kicked but they wouldn't kill you probably unless there's a cliff right there <laughs> okay now we're going to brush this side Not their main. okay now what we've got here is we've got the saddle blanket all right i'm going to i'm going to lengthen oops i'm going to lengthen no, no, I'll tell you why. Because if you tie a knot, back up, sweetheart. If you tie a knot and the uh, horse was to do anything and rear up on that knot, there's not a knot in this world you can undo, but you can always undo a slip. It'll just, it'll almost slip off by itself. Okay, so now we're going to put the blanket on. The blankets are pretty easy. The cleanest, prettiest side, or any side with patches, always goes up. The dirty, hairier side will always go towards the horse. So it's common sense. You just look at it and go, that, that side looks the worst, so I'm going to put that towards the horse. Okay? Now, what we're going to learn here is how to put this on as well as the saddle by a certain methods to where we don't have to use our back. Okay? And unfortunately, we're at a bad angle kind of uh, for us to do. So what I need you guys to do is kind of move back over here. That way I can do it a little bit better and not be at a bad angle. But when we put on the blanket, what we want to practice here is how to actually do this so we don't use our back. Many people will just learn to lift up everything and put it on a horse. And after you do that a while, you kind of say to yourself, God, that, that's kind of, that hurts after a while. So we want to learn how to do it without hurting ourselves. So we're going to take the blanket, the back in our right hand and the front in our left, and we're going to stand next to the horse's shoulder right here facing the same direction. Now we're going to turn counterclockwise and lift this blanket. Now the blanket's not heavy, but we're practicing for the saddle. Okay, now where does the saddle blanket go? It goes between the hip and the wither. Okay, like here, it would not be a NASCAR with a spoiler. That's not, not going to be right. Nor do we need a neck warmer. Okay, so what's going to happen is even if you've never saddled a horse before, you're going to be able to look at it and say, you know what, that looks like it belongs there. Or if you're slightly off, you'll be able to say, I think I'm off a little bit. Okay, and all you have to do is say, can you help me out with that? And we'll come say, hey, you got it. Or, nope, let's move that a little bit. All right. Now, the reason we practice that with the, the, the blanket is because it's light and we can do it without having to really think too much about it. Now, we have to think more on the saddle because it's heavier. Same position, the right hand back, left hand front. Just grab it like a, anything else. Like a golf bag almost, handle and bottom. All right, now I'm going to put it on my right hip. The reason I'm going to spin quickly to my left is to gain centrifugal force and momentum. So I'm going to use that turn to help me lift my saddle. Because I'm going to start lifting it right here, but I won't have to use my back at all. This one's about 35 pounds maybe 40. The rest of them are about 20, so it won't be as heavy as mine. But watch. This is why you don't hurt your back, because of the centrifugal force. Lift right here and spin. No back. Okay? That's the best way to do it if you have any back problems or if you don't want to have any back problems. Because if you take that 40-pound saddle and lift it up, and I'm not the tallest man created, 
David's six foot. You guys are in the close to six foot, but I'm not. So I really, a, a six foot guy would be able to put that up easier with his back. But it's not worth doing it even for a six foot guy. Because eventually you're going to pull something, lifting that thing up over and over and over again. All right, now the first thing you want to do is let down your latigo. That's your tie strap. Just let it down, let it hang. Now we have to move around the horse. Now I'm going to pull my leather out. See how that leather's under there? Okay, that's, that just happens when you put a saddle on. If you'll also notice, all the stuff's on top of the saddle. Now many people won't do that because they, they, they don't want their leather to do weird things. But since we're teaching the public how to saddle, we don't want an octopus being thrown over the horse every day. So we put everything on top. All right, now we're going to walk around the horse. So remember, put our hand on their hip and walk around the horse. And now I'm on this far side. What do most people do? They stand over there and they throw all this stuff over. What happens though is they get a stirrup under their girth, they tighten it up and they ride off and the horse bucks them off. And they go, what's wrong with my horse? Well, the thing that's wrong with your horse, you didn't check the gas tank before you took off in the jet plane. You need to come physically look at it. So I'm gonna let my stirrup down. There's three things. I'm gonna let my stirrup down. I'm gonna let my girth down and my breast collar. So I've got three things that I need to let down on this side. The reason I came over here is to make sure when I pushed it off, it didn't do that or didn't do this. Anytime your horse is uncomfortable, in pain, the first thing he thinks of is I gotta get rid of something and you're the first thing that'll come off. It's not worth it. The ground hurts everywhere I've ever lived. I've never been anywhere where it's marshmallow ground. I mean, it's close, but with all the rain we got. All right, so I want all that hanging down straight. Now I'm going to walk back around the other side. I only have to go over there for the visual to make sure that I got it right, because I can't see it from here. Okay? Now I'm going to reach under and grab the girth. I'm going to hold it with my left hand. Now I'm going to take my tie strap and go down through the metal hoop and back up. I'm a little bit far back with my saddle, okay? See how I went down through and back up? Now I'm going to go down through the metal hoop on the saddle towards the front of the horse. Okay? Now don't worry about getting this really tight right away. Just get it snug because they're going to always, we teach them, they're always going to suck a little air. So we wait a few minutes and then we do it again. Now halfway through, I can make a number four. Everybody see the four? Can you kind of see it? It's about a bad angle for you, but the four tells me I'm right. Okay, now Carrie, you mentioned you were left-handed. Sometimes, like my wife, she goes and makes a backwards four. But if you'll make a forward four, it's easier to tighten your saddle later on. Okay, now I'm gonna go up through the metal hoop on my third part. Everybody see that? That's the only time I go up. Then I drop down through the loop. Okay, it's a tie. All right. Now this is this is one of the things that people do. I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack just for a second. This is one of the things that people either do because they're taught or they think they need to do it. They do what's called a double cinch. Okay. See how that's doubled up? Now when I start pulling on this, it never gives back. And what I do is I end up pulling it tight because I say to myself that's going to keep me on the saddle. Not my balance, this will keep me on the saddle. So that needs to be tight. So I start pulling it and pulling it. She learns to suck air. So now she's sucking and I'm kicking and she's sucking and I'm kicking. We're torturing our poor horses because we feel as though the saddle and this piece that keeps it on is what keeps us on. Unfortunately, that's just not the truth because I've seen that as tight as it can be and people still fall off and pull their saddle over to the side of the horse. So therefore, it's a false belief. It has to be. So what, how do we fix that? We get true balance and we never fall off. I can actually ride this horse with that loose of a girth and I have never fallen off once. I used to would have fallen off even if it was double cinched. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back the way I had it, the single cinch method. And I'm and see, I can. there's a lot of room there, but we'll tighten that after I get up on the horse. All right, now we're gonna move back here to the tail croup. Now, most people do not use tail croups except on Surrey buggies and little buggies they pull on the horse because this, this attaches to the Surcinkle and won't let the buggy hit the horse when you stop. But we use it for two reasons. One is we're in the mountains and two, their Arabian has what's called a mutton wither. Instead of like, like a thoroughbred or a quarter horse that has a mountain right there of withers, Arabs have 
hardly none just the way they're built okay so this is our little extra helper to not let the saddle slide too far forward so when you get ready to do this stand on the side of the horse stroke the tail lift it up and this piece of leather actually goes underneath the tail and then you buckle it up and what it does is it doesn't allow the saddle to go too far forward because the tail yep you, everything will come to you on a horse onto your left side everything will come to you and that's what that does it comes right underneath and buckles in and that's what stops this saddle from sliding too far forward on an Arabian okay now I'm gonna walk around the horse because I have one last thing I've got my breast collar to put on now many many people almost everybody's got one of these even if they don't need it you only really need it probably if you're going up up a hill because it stops the saddle from sliding backwards but people like the way they look, so they put them on there. So most of the time, they're just a showpiece. But for you guys to put it on, we need to notice one thing. And, and I'm going to describe it like this. This is like a little family, okay? There's two sisters. They're identical. And there's a brother. One of the sisters is already tied on the horse. We're going to grab its sister and take it with us. And the reason we're doing this is so we don't get this twisted. If I grab it from over there, it would in in inevitably be twisted every time. So I want it to be straight. I'm grabbing the other sister and I'm coming under the front of the horse just like that. And then I'm going to put it on the same way the other sister is. That's what I'm going to do. So all I'm doing is repeating what I saw over there. All right. Then I'm going to hook up the brother. I got to go through the legs and hook on the front ring of the girth. Now once I do that, I'm completely done as a guest saddling my horse. That's all I have to do. What will happen now is the wranglers will come along and I'm going to be my own wrangler for a minute. I was pretending to be a guest, but now I'm going to pretend to be a wrangler. We're going to put this bit on the horse. We do that for you. You don't have to do it. Okay? That's my girl. Big mouth. Big mouth. Good girl. Okay. All right. Now, when everybody's in this condition, we're going to start to get ready to mount the horse. Now, Miss Peyton is going to come assist me as my little wrangler, since all my wranglers are out on the rides. <laughs> okay. Now, do you remember how we do this? You hold the horse here and hold my stirrup. Okay, here we go. We're going to put our left foot in the stirrup. And then we're going to bounce with our right leg and then go up to the thing. Now, you can grab the saddle because someone's holding it. So bounce. Oh, you got to hold it. You got to hold it a little bit harder there, Peyton, because remember, we ain't got it tight yet. Can you put some weight on that thing for me? I'm going to grab the hair to... Hey, Kadisha, pay attention. I need your help, too. All right, here we go. You got it? Okay, one, two, three. There, much better. And then swing your leg over. All right, now, Peyton, help me get my... Help me get... No, don't let me go loose yet. Help me get my foot. There we go. All right. See, everybody needs a little help. All right, now come walk around for me. Remember, we got to do our girth. Remember how to tighten that for me? Mm -hmm. Okay, you tighten it just like you know how. That a girl. Yep, pull on that side there. Okay, now pull your, pull your bottom down. Yep, pull, pull, pull. Keep pulling, keep pulling, good girl. Okay, now stick it up here. That's our safety clause. When we stick the end of the girth up here, or the uh, tie strap, we know we checked it. All right, now we're gonna go out on the ride. So now you're gonna unsnap, and I'm gonna follow her. She's a horse this time, okay? She's a horse.